Dear Heavenly Father, as the morning sun pierces through the night's veil, a profound sense of awe washes over me. Your majesty and never-ending love leave me breathless. With each new day I am reminded of the priceless gift of life and the countless blessings you graciously bestow upon me. Leave a like for this video and share it at least one time to help us reach more people. Spread the gospel and change more lives comment using the word Amen. In the face of whatever you're dealing with today, God wants you to know that your help comes directly from Him, the Creator of heaven and earth. We're about to embark on a heartfelt prayer together, calling on God for divine protection and abundant blessings in the name of Jesus. Stay with us until the end, open your heart, and be ready to receive the uplifting power of this prayer. Today guide me to cherish every moment, to live with purpose and intention, seeking your will in all that I do. Grant me the wisdom to discern your voice amidst the world's deafening noise. Help me listen attentively to your guidance and follow your lead with unwavering courage and conviction. May your Holy Spirit empower me to walk in obedience to your commands, shining your light in this world that so desperately needs it. I lay before you my hopes and dreams, my fears and anxieties. You are my refuge, my strength, my ever-present help in troubled times. Fill me with your peace that surpasses all understanding and grant me the assurance of your love that casts out all fear. Protect me, Father, from the enemy's attacks and the dangers of this world. Surround me with your angels and shield me with your mighty hand. Guard my heart and mind and lead me in the paths of righteousness. Bless my loved ones, Lord, with your grace and mercy. Watch over them, protect them, and may your presence be a guiding light in their lives. Help us to support and encourage one another, growing together in faith and love. Thank you, Father, for the promise of your presence and the assurance of your faithfulness. May this day be a life lived to honor you and bring glory to your name. For as the Lord makes firm the steps of the one who delights in him, though he may stumble, he will not fall, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. To you, Father, I give all praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You must practice these five habits to start your day. First habit, awaken with gratitude. Begin each morning by awakening your spirit to thankfulness. As long as you have breath in your lungs, you have reason to praise the Lord. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 16 to 18 says, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances. Notice it doesn't say give thanks for all circumstances, but in all circumstances whether good or bad, joyful or painful. Life will present you with all kinds of situations, but there will always be something to thank God for. Cultivate this grateful attitude that sees the blessing in the storm. Second habit, seek divine protection. When you wake, you never know what the day holds. This world is full of threats, and the first Peter 5 verse 8 warns, be sober-minded, be watchful, your adversary the devil prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. Don't let it be you. Seek the divine protection offered by the blood of Jesus Christ. Invite angelic heavenly protection, the kind only the Good Shepherd can provide. Third habit, offer ceaseless praise. Never let a day pass without praising the Lord, for we only praise what we value. If you value Jesus and are grateful for what he has done, you will praise him. Many battles are won through praise alone. The Israelites brought down Jericho's walls with a shout. Paul and Silas were freed from prison as they praised at midnight. Praise is powerful appreciation, declaring, We value you, Lord Jesus, we adore you. Fourth habit. Invite the Holy Spirit Romans 15 verse 13 says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. The Holy Spirit empowers us. He is the helper, teaching us God's ways. We need his counsel daily to abound in faith and hope. Fifth habit, submit to the Lord's leading. Each day, submit to the Lord and ask him to order your steps. Seek to do his will with a willingness to serve him. Humble yourself and commit to doing something for Jesus whether sharing his love with someone or blessing someone in need. Submit yourself to serve the Lord wholeheartedly 
Let us pray now, Lord Jesus, you are truly great and worthy of my deepest adoration and worship. You are a mighty and powerful God like no other. There is none that can even compare to your majesty. I praise you, O God, because you are all-knowing, omnipotent and omniscient. As Isaiah 40 verse 26 declares, Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these, he who brings out their host by number, calling them all by name, by the greatness of his might, and because he is strong in power, not one is missing. Father, I am overwhelmed with gratitude, truly thankful for all you have done, for all you are doing, and even for all you will do in the future. Lord, I pray the Holy Spirit would teach me how to have a thankful heart in all circumstances, whether good or bad, painful or joyful. Help me to see your hand, your goodness in every situation. Give me eyes to perceive the blessing in the midst of the storm, to see your guiding hand even as I walk through the fire. Jesus, I submit myself fully to you, I say. Let your will be done. Have your way in my life as you order my steps. Holy Spirit, teach me how to daily seek the Lord, how to carry out God's will for my life and serve him wholeheartedly. Teach me humility before the Lord. Teach me to be still and acknowledge him as the everlasting God. As it says in Acts 4 verse 31, when they had prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and continued to speak the word of God with boldness. Even now as I pray, Holy Spirit, I invite you to shake my life. Fill me and empower me with courage and boldness to stand and declare the goodness of the Lord. I welcome you, Holy Spirit. Teach me to rejoice always, to rely on the joy of the Lord as my strength. Teach me to pray without ceasing, to pray in the Spirit. For as John the 4 verse 24 says, God is Spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. Holy Spirit, teach me true worship. Teach me how to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Show me how to have a closer, more intimate relationship with Jesus. Reveal to me how to live, how to speak, how to conduct myself in a way that honours God and is pleasing to him. Help me to always have praises on my lips. Let it become a habit and routine to praise and worship the Lord with every fibre of my being at every chance. Lord, you are great and so worthy to be praised. I thank you for listening to this prayer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Dear friends, let us meditate together on the powerful words of Psalm 90. This is a psalm that pleads to the Lord with raw honesty. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations, before the mountains were born, before you gave birth to the earth and the world. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. The psalmist acknowledges our frailty before an eternal God. You turn people back to dust, for a thousand years in your sight are like a day that has just gone by. We are like the morning grass that springs up green and vibrant only to wither by evening's fall. We are consumed by your anger. You have set our iniquities before you. Yet there is a stark realisation, our need for God's wisdom to truly live. Teach us to number our days aright, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing love, that we may sing for joy and be glad all our days. The cry goes out. May the favour of the Lord our God rest upon us, establish the work of our hands. Dear listener, we have come to this profound realisation. We desperately need Jesus Christ. We need his love, mercy and ever-present care to surround us. We need God, for God alone can preserve us from evil. He is the providing and protecting God who always keeps his promises with grace abounding. So I urge you, praise the Lord, when you praise God in the face of danger, he will intervene. When you praise amid problems, you magnify God instead of the difficulty. When enemies come against you, if you still praise, God himself will move mightily on your behalf. There may be days it feels impossible to summon praise, times when you are so overwhelmed it's a battle. But I promise you, if you can only learn to praise the Lord with all your heart in those darkest moments, you will find him to be an unshakable shelter during life's fiercest storms. You will witness him halting your enemies, for he is more than able to defeat anything that comes against you. Hear me, people of God. Praise must be a priority in your life. 
so let us pray now. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your uplifting, encouraging word. Father, I pray in agreement with all who are listening. Cast your eyes upon us. Let your gaze be fixed on our lives. For that person listening right now in need of your touch, may you see them, Lord. May you see their faith, their desire, their need. I praise you, Lord Jesus, because you are a God who sees beyond the veil, beyond the facade we show the world. You are a God who sees straight into our souls. I yearn for your gaze over my life, over my family, because unlike human eyes, when you look down on me from your heavenly throne, you see all that is in my heart. You see what troubles and hurts me, my struggles and pain, the innermost parts of me. And I am grateful, for only you can make me whole. Only through your loving gaze can all my burdens be lifted. I speak the priestly blessing of number 6, verse 24 to 26 over my life. The Lord bless me and keep me. The Lord make his face shine on me and be gracious to me. The Lord turn his face toward me and give me peace. May this be my reality, that your face shines on me day and night, turn towards me each day, giving me peace. I desire for your eyes, filled with compassion, mercy, and unconditional love to fall on me. I am running into your embrace, Jesus, because it is only in your loving arms that I can stand upright. It is there that I can proclaim Psalm 40, verse 2. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. In your arms I rise up in faith and boldness, no longer bent over in despair, but now with great posture I can stand and say, I am healed. I renounce the devil's power. I can testify boldly of God's goodness. Thank you, Jesus, that when I am weary I can come to you. Thank you for your gentleness when the load is heavy. In you I find relief. I have realized, Father, that the only way to truly live is to stand in the embrace of the one whose image I was created in. I stand in your unconditional, pure love, Jesus, and in this I am set free from agony, from trying to fix everything on my own. I lay all my burdens down before you. No longer will my mind be clouded by worry, earthly troubles or shortcomings. Your love covers all. Your love is restoring. Your love mends broken hearts. So I will glorify your name forever, Jesus. I praise you because I believe by faith you see me, you rescue me. You'll never abandon me, but instead, you'll be all I need. I give you thanks, Lord Jesus. We bless your holy name. Amen. In the parable of the two sons, found in Matthew 21, verse 28 to 32, Jesus reveals a profound truth. What we say is not always what we do. There are those who will declare their love for God, but their actions tell a different story. They proclaim devotion to Jesus Christ, yet live a life that doesn't align with their words. As Jesus himself states in Matthew 7, verse 21, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. This verse makes it clear. It's not those who can simply talk the Christian talk that will enter God's kingdom, but those who walk the walk, those who actively do the will of the Father. In the parable, when the father asked his sons to work in the vineyard, the first son initially refused, but later had a change of heart and went. The second son gave the appeasing answer, I go, sir, but never followed through on his words. The first son demonstrated a convicted, repentant spirit by altering his course, but the second son showed no true intention to obey, no realization of wrongdoing. So I urge you, if you find yourself in sin, allow the Lord to change your mind. Listen to that still, small voice of the Holy Spirit and change your ways. Don't let your heart be hardened. If you truly love Jesus, that love must be evidenced through how you live your life. If you really are a believer and disciple, then it's not merely what you say that matters, but what you do. As James 1 verse 22 instructs, do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Beloved, let's be doers of the word, not hearers only. Let your walk match your talk. Don't just give lip service. Let your life shout an authenticity that brings glory to God. For it is the humble, obedient heart that inherits the kingdom, not those who were merely hearers who deceived themselves, Father. We praise your name because you are a patient and loving God. Your word says in Matthew 13, verse 19, 
When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. Lord, I'm praying that would not be me. I rebuke the enemy in Jesus' name. May the Holy Spirit protect and guard the word sown in my heart so the devil cannot steal it away. You said in verses 20 to 21, the seed falling on rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But they have no root, so they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. Father, as I receive your word, may it be deeply rooted within me, so that when difficulty arises, it will be your word that encourages and strengthens me. Help me not fall away when trouble comes, but remain steady, anchored in you. In verse 22 you said, The seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. King Jesus, help me, protect me, give me grace to be strong so the word in my heart is not choked out by this world's cares. Help me not be drawn to superficial pleasures that delight for a season. Lord, I pray I may be that believer who hears your word and understands it, bearing much fruit because it has been sown on good soil. God, I pray you would make us people of integrity, men and women who not only say the name of Jesus, but are found following him, practicing his commandments and teachings. Your word in James 2, 1, verse 22 to 25 says, Do not merely listen to the word, and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. Lord, I pray I would be a believer who does more than just declare faith. Help me by your Spirit to put it into practice. Help me live according to your word. I want my life governed by your word, ruled by truth. For as Romans 2 verse 13 says, It is not those who hear the law who are righteous in God's sight, but it is those who obey the law who will be declared righteous. Lord, I understand you don't want mere hearers who choose disobedience. I pray I may be one who is moved by your word to repent, to seek first your kingdom. Father, help me stay in tune with your voice. Help me have rich soil for your word to be planted, that I may produce good fruit abundantly. Father, I thank you, bless you, honour you, and give you glory. I appreciate you listening to this prayer. In Jesus' name, Amen. The Bible clearly speaks of the reality of spiritual warfare. You can try to bury your head in the sand and pretend it doesn't exist, but my friends, God's word would not mention it if it weren't real. Instead of fixating on the enemy we face, let's focus on the powerful weapons we've been given. In Ephesians 6 verse 10 to 18, Paul instructs, Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armour of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore put on the full armour of God. Notice something, the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, feet fitted with the readiness of the gospel of peace, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation. These are all defensive elements. They are designed to block the enemy's attacks, to secure us so no weapon from his camp can inflict serious damage. The only offensive weapon we have is the sword of the Spirit, which is the living, active Word of God. This is what we use to defeat the enemy. So let's understand each part of this armour. Jesus said he is the way, the truth and the life, and we need to gird ourselves with this truth. The devil is the father of lies, but with the belt of truth on, we will not fall victim to his deceptions. We wear the breastplate of righteousness because it protects us from the enemy's unclean, sinful schemes. Clothed in righteousness, we pursue what is right and turn away from sin. On our feet we have the readiness given by the gospel of peace. This firm foundation allows us to stand steady, unmoved by the battles that rage. The shield of faith extinguishes all the flaming arrows and accusations the evil one hurls our way. Our faith and trust in God safeguards us, the helmet of salvation guards our minds, allowing us to fix our thoughts on Christ, our redemption. 
And finally, we wield the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God which is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. This is our offensive weapon to combat the enemy's lies with truth. So church, suit up. Put on this full armour daily through prayer and the study of God's Word. Stand firm against the devil's schemes by walking in truth, righteousness, faith and the power of the Gospel. And take up the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, for it is our mighty offensive weapon against the enemy. We need to be firmly rooted in God's Gospel of Christ. The shield of faith is what protects us from the arrows the enemy hurls our way. Arrows of discouragement, depression, low self-esteem. Our mind is where the enemy frequently attacks, because if he can affect our thinking, he can affect our life. So the helmet of salvation is crucial for every believer. Finally, we are told to take up the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. God's Word is living and active, and we can use it to defeat the enemy's lies and speak truth over our lives for protection. I urge you today to get to know God's Word intimately. Read Scripture often, memorize verses, meditate on them constantly. Because when you go through the many ups and downs of life, it's only what is within you that will sustain you. If the Word is in you, you will survive and overcome by God's grace and the power in His Word. The reason it's so vital to meditate on God's Word is because of Joshua 1 verse 8. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. God's Word has the answer for every season, so we must be anchored in it, letting our prayers be rooted in Scripture. Let us pray, Lord Jesus, I thank you for your plan and will for my life. May it prevail. I know the enemy also has an evil scheme to steal, kill and destroy, but in Jesus' name I break every plan of the devil over my life. I refuse to let him influence me or my family. I speak the blood of Jesus over my future, family, health, the works of my hands, my coming and going, I plead the blood over everyone and everything attached to me. The devil will not wreak havoc in my life. No evil force shall gain a foothold over me. Holy Spirit, help me daily put on the belt of truth so I can recognize truth from deception. Clothe me in the breastplate of righteousness to pursue what is right. May my feet be ready with the gospel of peace to stand firm. Increase my faith and trust in you as my shield against the enemy's attacks. Guard my mind with the helmet of salvation, fixed on Christ my redemption, and place in my hands the sword of the Spirit, your living, active word, to combat every lie with truth. Thank you for providing your full armor. I pray that I may always have on the breastplate of righteousness, so that when the enemy tries to attack me with sin and impurity, I will stand strong, remaining focused on the pursuit of holiness. Holy Spirit, help me and cover me, so that my heart may be made pure and whole. When the devil tries to attack my heart and mind, I pray he will have no effect because I have put on the breastplate of righteousness. I pray for a peaceful character, Lord, a peaceful spirit rooted in knowing that my Savior, my Lord Jesus, is the Prince of Peace. Father, when the devil plots against me, when he tries his attacks, may the shield of unwavering faith defend me I pray my faith will be immovable because it is anchored not in earthly situations or circumstances, but in your word and in Jesus Christ alone. Lord Jesus, I know the battle for my mind is key in this spiritual warfare. Help me renew my mind, developing thoughts always fixed on you. Give me what I need to stand strong in this life. Help me meditate constantly on your word, which is living, sharper than any double-edged sword, your word is truth and there is power in it. May the Holy Spirit continually urge and convict me to study and absorb your life-giving word. In this battle against evil forces, I pray I'll never be found without the armor you've provided. May I never be caught unprotected and ill-equipped, but instead give me a wise mind and a faithful heart that is always ready to fight the enemy. I thank you, Lord, for your might and strength. Thank you for providing all the resources I need to overcome the devil and live victoriously in Jesus' name. Dear Lord, as the dawn breaks and a new day begins, I come before you with a heart full of gratitude. Thank you for the gift of life and the blessings you bestow upon me each day. 
Guide my steps today and help me to walk in your light and share your love with those around me. Grant me wisdom to make good decisions, patience to face challenges, and compassion to care for others. May my actions reflect your grace and kindness. Heavenly Father, I feel weary and burdened, but I know that in my weakness, you are my strength. Please fill me with your power and sustain me through the trials I face. Help me to trust in your plan even when I don't understand it. Give me courage to persevere and faith to believe that better days are ahead. Surround me with your love and lift me up when I am down. Thank you for always being my refuge and fortress. Lord, as the day comes to an end, I pause to reflect on your goodness and mercy. Thank you for being with me every moment, guiding me through the ups and downs. Forgive me for the times I have fallen short today and cleanse my heart of any bitterness or resentment. Help me to forgive those who have wronged me and to seek forgiveness from those I have wronged. Grant me peaceful rest tonight and renew my spirit for the day to come. I entrust all my worries and cares to you, knowing that you are in control. Father in heaven, I seek your guidance today. Illuminate my path and show me the way I should go. Help me to listen to your voice and to discern your will in my life. When I am uncertain, grant me clarity. When I am fearful, give me courage. Let your wisdom guide my decisions and your love fill my heart. I surrender my plans to you, trusting that your plans for me are good and perfect. Lead me, Lord, and I will follow. Gracious God, I come before you with a heart overflowing with gratitude. Thank you for the countless blessings you have poured into my life, for the love of family and friends, for the beauty of creation, and for your unwavering presence, I give you thanks. Help me to live a life that reflects my gratitude, to be a blessing to others as you have been to me. Teach me to find joy in every moment and to trust in your provision always. Heavenly Father, I come before you in the stillness of this moment, seeking your presence and guidance. As the day begins, I am reminded of your endless grace and love. Thank you for the gift of a new day, for the opportunities it brings, and for the chance to start afresh. Help me to use this day to glorify you in all I do. May my thoughts, words and actions reflect your love and bring peace to those around me. Fill me with your Holy Spirit, guiding my decisions and steps so I may walk in your ways. Lord, I pray for strength and courage as I face the challenges that lie ahead. Life can be overwhelming, and I often feel burdened by its demands. But I know that you are with me, offering comfort and support. Grant me the resilience to persevere, the wisdom to navigate difficulties and the faith to trust in your plan for my life. When I am weak, be my strength. When I am lost, be my guide. Remind me that with you, all things are possible and I am never alone. Father, I lift up my loved ones to you. Please watch over them, protect them and bless them abundantly. For those who are struggling, provide them with the comfort and assistance they need. For those who are joyful, let their happiness be multiplied and shared. Help me to be a source of support and love to those around me. Show me ways to serve and encourage them, reflecting your love in my actions. May our relationships be strengthened through your grace and mercy. Lord, I seek your peace in my heart and mind. In this world of constant noise and chaos, it can be hard to find stillness and serenity. Quiet my anxious thoughts and calm my troubled spirit. Help me to find moments of rest in your presence where I can be renewed and restored. Teach me to rely on you fully, casting all my worries and fears onto you, for you care deeply for me. Your peace surpasses all understanding and I ask for it to fill me now. Dear God, I pray for guidance and clarity in the decisions I must make. Life often presents us with choices that are difficult and complex. I ask for your wisdom to discern the right path and the courage to follow it, even when it is hard. Open my eyes to see the opportunities you place before me and give me the strength to seize them. May your will be done in my life, and may I trust in your plan, knowing that it is good and perfect. Gracious Lord, I am grateful for the countless blessings you have given me. Thank you for the simple joys, the moments of laughter, and the love that surrounds me. 
Help me to always have a heart of gratitude, recognizing your hand in every aspect of my life. When times are tough, remind me of your faithfulness and the many ways you have provided for me. Let my life be a testament to your goodness, and may I always praise your name with a thankful heart. Father, as I prepare to rest, I surrender all my worries and burdens to you. Grant me a peaceful night's sleep, free from anxiety and stress. Protect my mind from troubling thoughts and fill my dreams with your peace. As I sleep, renew my strength and prepare me for the day ahead. Thank you for your constant presence and unfailing love. In your arms, I find true rest and peace. Heavenly Father, as I embark on another day, I ask for your presence to be with me in every moment. Thank you for the breath in my lungs, the beat of my heart, and the opportunity to experience another day of life. May your love and grace be my guide, illuminating my path and helping me navigate the challenges that come my way. Grant me the ability to see your hand in all circumstances and to trust in your divine plan. Lord, I pray for patience and understanding. In a world that often moves too fast and demands too much, help me to pause and seek your wisdom. Teach me to be patient with myself and others, to listen more and speak less, and to respond with kindness and compassion. Let my interactions today be filled with your love, bringing comfort and peace to those I encounter. May your spirit guide my words and actions, reflecting your grace in all I do. Dear God, I lift up those who are hurting and in need of your healing touch. Whether they are suffering physically, emotionally or spiritually, I ask that you bring them comfort and peace. Use me as an instrument of your love to offer support and encouragement. Help me to be attentive to the needs of others, showing empathy and understanding. May your healing power flow through me, bringing light and hope to those in darkness. Father, I seek your forgiveness for my shortcomings and failures. Cleanse my heart of any bitterness, anger or resentment. Help me to forgive those who have wronged me, just as you have forgiven me. Grant me the strength to let go of past hurts and to move forward with a heart full of love and grace. Fill me with your spirit, that I may live a life that honors you and reflects your boundless mercy. Gracious God, as the day comes to an end, I thank you for your constant presence and unwavering love. Reflecting on the day's events, I see your hand guiding me through both the joyous and challenging moments. Help me to learn from my experiences and to grow in faith and character. As I lay down to rest, I place all my worries and fears in your hands, trusting in your infinite wisdom and care. Grant me a peaceful night's sleep, renewing my spirit for the day ahead. Amen. Leave a like for this video and share it at least one time to help us reach more people. Spread the gospel and change more lives by comment using the word Amen. To further support the dissemination of this message, consider sharing this video with a friend or family member. Click the like button, subscribe to the channel, and enable notifications to stay updated with more content that nourishes the soul and uplifts the spirit. See you at next video.